Hello, and in the last of these videos about the three fundamental laws of circuit analysis, we'll be looking at what's wrong with Kirchhoff's current law. This time we need to do a thought experiment. This one. What I've got here is a voltage source connected via a switch to a 1K resistor, and then a very long wire, 100 kilometers long, to an ammeter, and then the circuit is completed with another 100 kilometer long wire coming back again. Close the switch. What happens? Well, just before the switch is closed, the voltage at this point here in the circuit would be 1 volt if we define the voltage at this point here in the circuit as being 0 volts. That's what this voltage cell does. It forces this point here to be 1 volt above this point here. Right. The switch is open. Therefore, there is no current flowing in this circuit at all. So if there's no current, the ammeter will be reading 0. The voltage at this point here will be 0. And with no current, the voltage drop across the resistor will be 0. So this point here would be at 0 volts as well. That's our situation before the switch is closed. We now close the switch. The voltage at this point here suddenly shoots up to 1 volt because it's now connected to the positive terminal of the voltage source. We have a 1 volt potential difference across our resistor, so a current starts to flow. And with 1 volt across a 1K resistor, a current of 1 milliamp would start to flow. So we have 1 milliamp flowing through this circuit so our ammeter would start to read 1 milliamp, except that it can't, because that would violate special relativity. Special relativity says that information cannot travel faster than the speed of light. So the ammeter cannot know that the switch has just been closed until at least the amount of time that it takes light to get from the switch to the ammeter later. How long does that take? Well, if we've got 100 kilometers to go and we're going at the speed of light, then it would take about 333 microseconds. So the ammeter would measure zero milliamps for at least the 333 microseconds that it took for this information to get from the switch to the ammeter. But the current is flowing through this resistor the whole time. Now that's a problem because consider every single little bit of this wire. Kirchhoff's current law says that the current flowing in to that node must be equal to the current flowing out of that little bit of wire. And the current flowing in to this little bit must be equal to the current flowing out of that little bit. And the current flowing in to this little bit must be equal to the current flowing out of that little bit, and so on down the whole length of the wire. But the current flowing in to the first bit of the wire here is 1 milliamp, comes from the current flowing through the resistor. But the current flowing out of the last bit of the wire must be 0 milliamps, at least for the first 333 microseconds. So if we've got 1 milliamp flowing into this wire, but zero milliamps flowing out of this wire, then somewhere along the wire, there must be a point where you have current flowing in, but no current flowing out. But that violates Kirchhoff's current law. Yes, Kirchhoff's current law only works for small circuits or for times that you're not worried about the propagation delay, we call it, about the length of time it takes for information to get from one end of the circuit to the other. After around 
333 microseconds or thereabouts. After the information has got to the ammeter, then the ammeter would be reading 1 milliamp and everything would be fine, Kirchhoff's current law would be being obeyed. It's just for that amount of time that the information is taking to get from one end of the circuit to the other that Kirchhoff's current law has a problem. In terms of the hydraulic analogy, what's happening is the assumption that the fluid is incompressible is breaking down. We really do have a little bit more fluid flowing into this section of the pipe than we do flowing out of this section of the pipe because the fluid flowing in compresses a little bit. And you get this pressure wave of fluid going down the pipe. In a very similar way, you get a pressure wave of charge moving down a wire like this, taking the information with it. How big a problem this is in real life depends on how big your circuits are and what time scales you're interested in, whether you can afford to wait for the propagation time from one side of the circuit to the other. The circuits that we build in the lab are not going to be 100 kilometers long, they're more likely to be somewhere around 10 centimeters long. So if the distance is 10 centimeters, how long does it take information to get from one end of the circuit to the other? Well, that would just be 0.1 meters divided by the speed of light, or about 333 picoseconds. That's 333 times 10 to the minus 12 seconds. That may seem like a very small negligible time. However, consider a waveform which changes at that rate. Maybe the voltage source here is not constant, but is oscillating between zero and one volt. And suppose that it remains at zero or one volt for 333 picoseconds. So it's changing at the same rate as the information takes to get from one side of the circuit to the other. This is a square wave with a period of 666 picoseconds. And if this period is 666 picoseconds, then the frequency of that square wave is 1.5 gigahertz. Now 1.5 gigahertz is not a particularly fast frequency these days. Microprocessors in personal computers go at twice that rate. That's a comparatively low frequency for mobile telephones or Wi-Fi signals to go at. We often build circuits which do have to transmit frequencies at or above 1.5 gigahertz. And in those cases, we cannot assume Kirchhoff's current law works. The current through a loop like this is not the same at all points around the loop. For the frequencies that we're going to be dealing with in this module, however, which tend to be around audio frequencies, we can afford to neglect this. Audio frequencies only go up to around 20 kilohertz or so. 20 kilohertz implies a period of 50 microseconds, and in 50 microseconds, light is traveling about 15 kilometers. So unless we're planning to build a circuit which is a significant amount of 15 kilometers in length, and I can tell you that we're not, then we can assume that Kirchhoff's current law is going to be fine for everything that we're going to do in this module. But do be aware that at much higher frequencies, or with much longer circuits, 
Kirchhoff's current law cannot be relied on. OK, that's the end of our talks about the three fundamental laws of circuit analysis.